Well, our next guest on today's Big Blend Radio Champagne Sunday show is Susan Hoffman. She's the author of Grand Distance. It's a newly released book that focuses on the choices grandparents have to make when faced with blocks to visitation with grandchildren. I mean, there's so many issues, maybe a divorce, and suddenly, oh, sorry, you can't see the grandchild anymore. Mm -hmm. You used to, but you can't, or maybe it could even start from the beginning. Uh, So she's been a longtime advocate on grandparents' rights uh, for grandparent-grandchildren connection. She has a a nonprofit under the same name. It's Advocates for Grandparent-Grandchild Connection, and uh, you can keep up with them at grandparentchildconnect.org. Also keep up with her other books. She was first on our show with Grand Wishes. She's also the author of A Precious Bond, It Won't Happen Again. No, it won't. Heck no. (laughs) I think a lot of women have been in that position before. And also, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? I choose happiness. Yes. And uh, very excited to have her back on the show. Grand Distance and her books are out now. You can get them on Amazon, Apple, Kobo, uh, all of those places, but go right to grandparentchildconnect.org. So welcome back, Susan. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, it's good to have you back on the show. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. I know we've been working at this. We've been working at it. So let's get the champagne out now, shall we? Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Having you back. And also... The work that you're doing um, in regards to grandparents and grandchildren, this connection that's so important. Uh, So before we get into grand distance, do you want to tell everybody just a little background of what led you into this world of even noticing that there there needs to be rights for grandparents? Well, it was personal experience. And when I lost access and visitation to my own grandson, Mm. I didn't have anybody to talk to. Uh, I I tried to talk to my friends and family, but nobody really understands unless they've gone through it. So uh, I ran this little ad in a little throwaway paper in Laguna Beach where I was living at the time, and I got a couple of responses. I was just asking if anybody had any grandparent visitation issues and to call this number. We would form maybe a little group or something, and that's how it started was uh, just a few people, grandparents kind of came out of the woodwork, and there's just such a need to share with someone and to get some support with somebody that's been Mm -hmm. through it. Mm -hmm. So then from there, um, we started a larger group, and then it turned into, along the way, then I legislated to change the law for grandparents in California following a step-parent adoption. Um, before that, California didn't have that that um, code. They had uh, several states don't have it, but um, most do, that allows a, a grandparent to continue visitation or relationship with their grandchild following a step-parent adoption. So that happened, and then um, I formed a nonprofit, 501c3, and it became an organization pretty soon, a website, and um, people were calling and emailing from different states, and mm-hmm. they still do. Wow. Wow. So, so this is something <laughs> you're going through in California, but that bill that you worked on um, isn't everywhere across the country, right? It's in most states, I believe. It was. It just kind of fell through the cracks in California. And when mm. I did sponsor that bill, uh, it went through the California legislature through the consent calendar, which means it wasn't opposed and it was kind of um, just flew into it very quickly. It, it bypassed a lot of obstacles. And, Mm. um, yeah, it had 120 legislators supporting it. So, because it makes sense, you know, when a grandchild has a relationship with a grandparent, a loving adult in their lives for five years or so or longer, you, you can't rip that away from them. And that's exactly what happened with that law. Once, Mm. uh, once there was a step parent adoption, then it got rid of the grandparent as well. They were no longer recognized in a court of law as 
the grandparent. Wow. Hmm. That's hard on a child because then they don't know. Yeah. I mean, even like you, when you look at divorce, that's really hard on a child. They start to blame themselves sometimes or not understand it. But they know something's wrong, but they don't know, get it, you know, depending on the age. But, you know, then if the grandparent is gone, that makes it even Good harder. Yeah. I think it's it's emotionally hard for the grandparent, but for the children. I mean, I know some friends, you know, that are grandparents and a lot of times they're the ones who have the time to take, you know, the grandchildren to a botanical garden or give them the extra education and actually some of the life lessons that they need. You know, it's... Um, it's a choice. Mm-hmm. They're there yeah. because they want to be. They don't have to be. Yeah, exactly. And they're more than babysitters. Mm-hmm. You know, for sure. Way more than and that. And something you just alluded to, that when there's a divorce, the children blame themselves. The same thing goes with the grandparent. When the grandparent suddenly disappears, the children want to know, wonder if they did something wrong. Yeah. You know, why doesn't grandma come back anymore? What did I do? Doesn't she like me anymore? So I think that's the <laughs> greatest pain for any grandparent is wondering what the child will think. Especially when the parents... Because a lot of parents tend to make this a a treat to go see grandparents, you know, and it's an exciting day, and um, depending on how often you see your grandparents, you know, some some children only see their grandparents at holiday dinners, you know, so it's kind of rough on them when you decide, oh, well, no more visits for you. It's, It's really punishing the child for something the parents did. Yeah. Well, I've always said grandparent rights are really children's rights. Mm. Yeah, right. Exactly, exactly. And it goes well into their, I mean, even what about teenagers? If it happens as a teenager, doesn't that also, or is it really mostly a certain age group, a younger age group? I don't think it it matters. You know, except when they're a teenager, they accept it in a different way than a child does because then they socialize and have their own outside friendships and activities that it's mm. it still stings. It still is mm. they just handle it differently. They mm. maybe they understand a little bit more than a younger child would. Mm. And so when we go to Grand Distance, um tell us a little bit more with that because you've had a lot of books since we last spoke and um so tell us a little bit more about Grand Distance, how that has kind of grown from Grand Wishes. Grand Distance is revealing more of my personal story, um, whereas Grand Wishes was more of an introductory and it was a summary of many different things, including the legislation and all that, and then a precious bond was more of a guideline. By that time, mm-hmm. I had learned tips and communication skills and what to do and what not to do. So that's where a precious bond comes in. And then this one, since my grandson is over 18 now, I was able mm-hmm. to reveal what I did to see him. Whereas if I had done it when he was younger, Um, I would have gotten in a lot of trouble and maybe gotten a restraining order against me. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm sorry. No, we want you safe. You know, when you you think about you sharing the story, it's personal, but I think that's something that is, you know, when it gets down to it, you can have, you need the literature that can help you get through things, you know, all the legal tape and, and emotional drama that goes with it, but there's nothing like a book where someone else shares your story that, you know, you can go, man, somebody else, it, it helps you move forward when somebody else has been through a, a situation you have been through and you don't feel alone and then you feel a little bit more empowered and more connected to the world when you read someone's personal story. Yes, and, you know, because grandparents don't know what to do, as I said in the book, that you know, they go in so many different directions, if not all of them, at one point of where you just become immobile when this first happens and you just shut yourself up in the house and you stay in bed and just 
sob mm-hmm. and and grieve the loss mm-hmm. and you know then the the court and so on. But I decided that I wanted to see him grow up. I didn't want to miss. I, I didn't w- want to wait until he was 18 and go from five years old to 18. I wanted yeah. to see him each year of his life. Mm. And I wanted to make sure he was okay. It was kind of a way of watching over him to know that he was a fine, growing young man and a happy child. And then the selfish part was me wanting to see him grow up. I, I wanted to see each year. So, um, I saw him from a distance, and I got a hold of his school field trip, the schedule. And hmm. then yeah. I went in to the <laughs> wig store and got the wig and the disguise and bought the camera and just went undercover, undercover wow. grandma hmm. to go see him and I just showed up at these different activities, the zoo, the L.A. zoo, the uh, performance, the uh, Christmas Mm. performance at a high school and museum. And and he knew while you were doing this that you were there and kind of looked up? Oh, no. No, you couldn't do that. he did not see me. I only saw him. I couldn't risk that. Wow. Because he was... Wow. Yeah. You he become grandchild seven. stalker, you know, but in a good way. I mean, yeah. it's in a good way. But um, were you able to write letters? Because that's something, too. I mean, are you able to do email correspondence, that kind of thing? No. Um, the When the mother, the biological mother, and the adoptive father ended up getting a divorce, they they um, included a portion of their divorce that said that neither one of them would allow me to see him. Wow. Wow. So before that, before the divorce, I just was too scared to let him see me. He was too little. You know, he was five years old, six years old. Oh, I saw Grandma Susan today at the zoo. You know, I couldn't risk that. And then... Um, after he was, when he was eight, I got to see him for a short period of time when the dad and the mom were getting a divorce and he allowed me back into Jacob's life and then the mm-hmm. mom found out and she just put her foot down and she made him sign this paper saying that they would both keep me away so that would be no contact whatsoever. No cards, no letters, no gifts. No oh. contact, and I had to stay, I think, 100 feet away or something like that. I don't know. It wow, wasn't, that's like you're being treated like a criminal. Like, why? Exactly. It why, wasn't a why does that happen? order yeah, on me. Huh. It, it was between the two of them because she was angry that he let me back into Jacob's life at eight years old. Oh, I see. So this goes had, back to the two parents fighting at the end of the day. The two parents were fighting, and because the dad said she's doing to me, she's treating me the way she treated you. And so he called, and he said, I want you back in Jacob's life. This was wrong to keep you away for three years. So he let me back in, and it only lasted like six or seven months because the mom Mm. wants control of the situation and so she stepped in and made the divorce difficult for him and wouldn't allow it to go forward without him signing that paper so Mm. I'm in their divorce decree Mm. (laughs) and yeah it's amazing it's you know because I think really selfish it it is really so selfish of the woman it really is to deny that child of another it, adult that loves him. Yeah, it that's you know definitely makes you wonder whose interests does she put first on a day to day basis. Mhm. Yeah, that's that's a rough that's a rough thing to go through. Mm-hmm. You know, when when I think about you know 
there's grand, some grandparents aren't the best grandparents. Like, you know, I'm, I know a grandparent who walked through drunk, walked through a plate glass window drunk. And so, no, that's a problem. This is a different, you know, scenario. And, you know, I, you know, I just even think of a family we just stayed with in, um, on a farm stay. And, you know, it's like the whole, it's like a village. Yeah, it is. They're all together. They're all retired teachers, and they're teaching the kids. And, I mean, this is like a village. And, happy and, and it was the coolest experience yeah. to see that happen. And I think America has a lot of that, but then it can get taken away at any point. And that's a really rough thing because I just always looked as grandparents as being the person you ran to when you fell down. Yes, the cookies. We do want the cookies. But there was also, like, granddad teaching you to fish. There's grand, grandma teaching you. There's just this teacher that isn't the same as your parent-parent teacher. You know what I mean? It's not like they're going, did you do your homework, unless they're raising <laughs> you, right? Because some grandparents raise children 100%. Mm-hmm. But there's this extra education thing that grandparents are fun about. Versus the parent, depending on the age. Do you know what I mean, Susan? <laughs> you know? Well, you yeah. That. If, yeah, like in in Grand Distance, I found all those quotes and little poems about grandparents. You know, mm. and I, we inserted those into the book, and um, because yeah. it's so true. You know, all yeah. the different little little. Um, quotes that you come across about grandparents and how important they are in the child's life and um yeah i don't know you know like they come back too as teenagers i know teenage girls that end up going to stay with grandma because they may have messed up a few things you know or have been Mm -hmm. in a bad relationship and i know you've written about you know abusive relationships too but -hmm. sometimes grandma grandma's house is like the place of solace where you can Get back on your two feet and and enjoy the the joys of just making a really good cup of tea and sitting at the kitchen table and having those conversations that you need to have, but moving forward, you know. So I look at that, too, the relationship with grandparents, it's it's lifelong, you know. I have a friend It's unconditional love. And like there's an Italian proverb, if nothing is going well, call your grandmother. Mm -hmm. That says it all. Mhm. Yeah, exactly. You need to have a good laugh. You know, I remember I called my grandmother when I was in South Africa, <laughs> and boy, did I get in trouble for that phone bill. I just decided, oh, I can learn how to use the telephone. Look at this. I learned how to dial internationally from South Africa to America. I really, mm-hmm. I got in trouble for that. But we did see her after that, so that was good. But um, and if I didn't, I wouldn't have talked to my great nana. So that was good because she passed away like shortly mm-hmm. after that. Um, but so in a way, the, the the phone bill was worth it, right, Nancy? <laughs> <I'm> sure. <laughs> it was. I was allowed to do that. But they are. I mean, I, I used to, you know, send my grandmother all these writings. And, you know, it's like you, you can bombard your grandparents with stuff <laughs> more at times, you know. They're not as busy sometimes. It just is all dependent, you know, and I think it's part of the village. And when there's a breakup in the family, part of what – can heal a family to move forward and keep that unity is the grandparent grandchild well, it, and, and it could be stabilizing force thing. neutral yeah. and it's a neutral thing mm-hmm. you know it helps everybody yeah it's, if it, you keep somebody you know instead of spreading you know the dislike and all the bad feelings you can Mm-hmm. have neutral ground mm. and i think that's important for kids well, what's your relationship i mean if you don't mind asking what you've written a book on this though on, on being stalker grandma um undercover grandma is far better but mm-hmm. I guess, um yeah stalker doesn't stalker is not good we don't want to say that <laughs> but it's you know but what what's your grandson's you know now that he knows what's your relationship yeah. like with that well, you know, I did see him when he was eight, so he could process that. And he, eight is different than five. You know, he had right. a memory of me from eight. So um, then when he became a teenager, he asked about me. And we reconnected mm. because he wanted to see me. Mm. And it was yeah. his idea. And so I ended up seeing him, you know, maybe we'd spend, of course, his little brother couldn't know about it, 
So, but he kind of wow. liked that cloak and dagger by the time he was a teenager. Wow. He he liked sneaking around like that. So I would pick him up on a corner, and we'd go to Starbucks, and that's where he would open his Christmas gifts. Oh. So that nobody knew about it. And then when he was 18, or or when he was, I guess, 17, when he graduated from high school, he got me a ticket, and I attended his graduation. Wow, that's so, awesome that you he know, did that. I mean, I think I was me, on like... the field, actually, and um, he, because I, I'm a journalist, and I had my press pass, so I went down on the field so girl. that his mom wouldn't wouldn't see me and I just um you know I shot photos of him and I was close to him during the whole ceremony and he knew how much I cared for him the fact that I was down there with him during the Mm. whole graduation I had a big hat on and all that so uh (laughs) a camera stuck to my face and then um yeah so I've continued to see him ever since he was a teenager that's awesome, you know, and I think, um, you know, the fact that you didn't stop caring for him, you know, just didn't walk away, says so much about your love for him and, you know, his brother. And um, I think that's something, you know, it grandparents don't mess with them, and they've been around the block. <laughs> don't, and she's a journalist. Don't mess with her, but and don't. She'll 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 create a she'll create a new bill, <laughs> you know. <laughs> really, parents need. Um, help from grandparents the parents need it too Mm -hmm. they really do yeah there's a lot of guidance um usually that that comes with grandparents they've done the same thing they've gone through the child rearing process they they you know they can really lend a hand in in many ways Mm -hmm. so it's kind of really you know cut off your nose to spite your face kind of thing well i think now also with that's hard to understand isn't it Mm -hmm. that yeah yeah Mm-hmm. Would, would just let that part of it go and you know yeah. they, having the help from a grandparent but that yeah. they when they cut them off you know then a lot of them just don't care about that help I guess well you know what's sad about it too is these, these family mm-hmm. traditions that are passed down or knowing mm-hmm. that hey this baby burps this way or has like a colicky thing that maybe runs in the family and the grandma's going to know exactly what to do, you know. So there's those Mm -hmm. child-rearing moments, but there's also family traditions and family history that gets cut off by not knowing your grandparents. Yeah. You know, who who were they? You know, it's like you start to realize, you start to dig into family history, and you'll find out, you know, if you watch Finding Your Roots, like TV show, you'll find out, hey, you know, my grandparents were actually over in Germany during World War II, and this is what happened to them. Or what? You know what I mean? It's like you're cutting off that leg of history that needs to be part of it, good or bad. It's important that I think people want to know who they are as they're as they're mm-hmm. growing up, and kids get interested. And it's so cool. You know, we have an opportunity as you know parents. I'm not a parent, but I'm just saying at this time frame when kids are growing up to get them involved in their own family history to help them get involved and interested in history as a whole and how the world works. And it starts with knowing your family, good and bad, understanding, you know, what everybody went through at certain times. How did they overcome obstacles? Right now with COVID, we're going to look back in our days as families and how we handled COVID. Did we have family Zoom meetings? Did we have Thanksgiving that way? Did you get to talk to your grandparents over Zoom? You know, it's one of the easiest things. I mean, how harmful is that to have a Zoom call? But apparently it's not going to happen for some, huh, right now? Exactly, yeah. Well, yeah. Wow. And I feel bad over the holidays. You know, the holidays. Well, the thing is, too, is you you can't, when you take actions like that, cutting somebody off from someone they love, when you take actions like that, um, you can't fix it. There's no going back. Mm Mm-hmm. You really can't fix it, so it's best not to... Well, we teach, that's what our organization works on or does, is Mm. our focus is to teach grandparents to change 
their behavior because you're not going to change the caregiver's behavior. Mm-hmm. To change mm-hmm. whatever they are doing if they are stubborn or holding on to their ego to basically give the dragon what it needs to eat in order to see this child. So if it's stepping over a boundary, then you learn to stop stepping over that boundary. You learn to stop giving advice when you're not asked to give advice or your opinion. And you respect the parent's wishes. Yeah, maybe they are walking on eggshells. Who Mm. cares? They get to see the child. You do whatever it takes to see that child. Mm. So it's setting aside the ego in order to remain connected to the child. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be what works the best. Of course, there's instances where nothing's going to work and they all end up in court. And a lot of grandparents win court-ordered visitation that way. Mm. But to expect the parent to change, um, eventually I think some of them do forgive and sometimes quicker than others and I mean we talk to people every day so Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of stories and Mm. well I bet it it takes a lot of work so do you have another book in your future I mean you've done a whole bunch you've got your own you know shelf now (laughs) with how much you've written um I don't know right now. I, I'm still promoting this one and marketing this one and getting yeah. it out there, and it's hard during COVID because there's no book signings mm. or yeah. events or anything. So it's it's difficult, although a lot of people are reading now. Yeah, I bet. Probably I read, think, yeah, reading yeah. more. Yeah, and I think it's a comforting something that for you know grandparents right now may need it over the holidays. You maybe know, maybe a virtual book signing is yeah would be something to consider like book clubs yeah yeah oh, cool. yeah I haven't thought of that one mm-hmm. like you know I just yeah. the message is I want grandparents to know that they have choices and yes. this maybe isn't a good fit for everybody to be donning a wig and and baggy <laughs> clothes and what color was photos. your wig I want to <laughs> know come on <laughs> what color was the wig. <laughs> Did you have more than it one wig? It was blonde. <laughs> it was, well, it's on the cover, actually. Yeah, the book is. Yeah, yeah, because I have dark hair, so yeah. that was. I think that was the first time I had worn it. Wow! Did you get nervous the first time you did that? Did you get like oh, kind of? Breathy? Oh my gosh! Yes, it was. Yes, I was so scared and. Wow. Well. Especially when I was by myself doing it, that yeah. particular that cover photo, one of my friends, I talked him into going. He didn't have children yet. It was somebody I worked with, and we became friends. So he and I went over to the Balboa Pier, and because I heard through the grapevine that there was going to be a field trip, and so they went whale watching. Jacob's class and so I was I knew what time it was and so we stood there and watched him get off the boat and then even then I was scared that was the first time I had done it and we were walking right behind him like just a foot behind him and the kids were walking and they went to the arcade and they walked on the pier and I just remember being so happy just to have been able to see him and then my friend took that photo of me and then he took photos of me sitting on the grass watching the kids play. And I just, I didn't want to leave. I just wanted to Mm. sit there and watch him play. Mm. So that was a little easier when I had somebody with me like that, but I mostly did these field trips by myself. And yes, I was scared. I got better Mm. at it the more I did, but Mm. I still was shaking and sweating and nervous. Um, probably the easiest ones were sitting at the beach, though, because 
the kids were playing in the sand and the water, and they weren't looking at any adults. This is a summer camp, and they just sat on a beach chair with their camera and just shot photos of them. Wow. It was, wow. Easy, it was easy to blend in. Yeah. Wow. You said our favorite word, blend. Yes. I know. <laughs> yes, so, I know. I know. <laughs> so, Susan, what is your champagne toast to or about? What are you happy about? I am grateful for the opportunity to step into the life of so many grandparents. Mm. Yeah, we are too. We're glad about what you're doing. Yeah, I think it's important. We appreciate it. It really is. We really do appreciate it. And and we're we're opening the court because you're back on the show, and it took mm-hmm. so long, and it's all <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> it just takes time on these things, but it's you know. You've written so many books and, you know, delved into different topics, um, but really all about family unity and understanding, you know, individual responsibility, who people are. Um, you've you've delved into some heavy topics, and it's not always easy to do to do that. And um, But everyone needs to read those heavy topics at some point in their life. So I really appreciate what you've done. And you've got a new book out, so we get to have champagne. And we wish you a wonderful holiday season and all grandparents and grandchildren out there that they do get to connect and they get their cookies together, even if it's over Zoom. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words and support, and thank you for having me on the show. Thanks for joining us again, and enjoy the sunshine. Is it sunny in California today? (laughs) Of course it is. It's, it's cold. Here. It's how, cold in Pennsylvania. I'm just it's saying. Cold. It's, it's cold. Our bodies don't know what to do about it's this. It's cold and rainy. It's a whole other world. I'm like, yeah. I'm cold, but it's really beautiful. It yeah, is it really is. beautiful. So we really can't complain. We've got all kinds of cold dogs and cats around us, so we're in a good spot here. But we want to play a song Sounds for you. Like um, this is a song called Stepping Stones, and it's from Kimia Penton. She's a world traveler, an amazing singer, songwriter, violinist. It's from her album, When the Rain Falls. And the whole album kind of goes through, a, it's like a story of life, you know, when you coming of age and understanding what your parents have taught you and your grandparents over the years. So I wanted to play this song from it, Stepping Stones. And, again, everyone, uh, keep up with Susan. It's Susan Hoffman. The book is Grand Distance. And, of course, Amazon, all those places, just type in Grand Distance, Susan Hoffman. You'll find it online. Um, but also go to their website, grandparentchildconnect.org. And remember, Amazon Smiles for nonprofits. So uh, keep up with that too if you're purchasing online. So here it is, Stepping Stones from Kimia Penton. You can go to kimiapmusic.com, and that's the letter P. All right, I got to be clear on that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry, grandchild humor. Okay, so thanks so much for joining us, Susan. You take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Here it is, Stepping Stones. Mom and Dad watching me grow With every orbit of the sun There's much more I got to know As the seasons change And I was fully grown I was more than made By the love they sold Mom and Dad so A different time With different days But the courage that I stand on Is the example that they gave My first stepping stone Was a life they led Two degrees later out to the city on my own Working at the corner office On the 21st floor Thinking how far I come And where I could go Taking in the whole world But I'm missing
From the lies they live. 